authorize the staff to fund the placement of interpretive material properly explaining the, uh, the role of Jefferson Davis in the revolution uh, as soon as possible, as soon as funds are available, um, assuming that removal will take some time. That's, that's the first bit. Um, unless you want me to combine the two. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure what the second one is going to be, but, um, <laughs> but um, the second one is that we support removal. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the, yes, Mr. Reynolds? Yeah. yeah. So my comment on the first one is, is well, what? Well, maybe we should start with the Well, maybe we should see if there is a second to that, uh, to that recommendation, that motion. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay, so there is a, a, a motion that's been uh, duly seconded by Dr. Ayers, uh, motion by Mr. Jarvis, uh, that uh, we have a, uh, a interpretive signage uh, uh, for the uh, existing uh, Jefferson Davis Arch uh, at Fort Monroe. Uh, we can now have comment on, on that. Uh, and I, I guess uh, I should defer first to the authority, but I have some comment as well. So uh, is there commentary on the motion, Mr. Reynolds? Yes, um, I, mean, I don't really have anything against the motion. I'm just not sure it's necessary. We might want to amend the motion to say that we support the decision made by the National Park Service and by the uh, Fort Monroe Authority staff uh, to expend monies to create these these uh, these uh, this interpretation, um, as we heard yesterday, um, the decisions have already been made to do so. The money is available, and the work to uh, figure out what to put on the and how to do the interpretation and what to say has begun. So we might want to amend it to say we support the staff decision staff of the Is there further comment? I accept that amendment to the motion. Okay, so the, uh, the motion is amended to, uh, uh, the, the, to show support for the staff's decision uh, with regard to the signage. Uh, I, the, 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 if there's no further comment, at least at this point, there can be further comment on this motion. Uh, I think the interpretation, interpretive signage, is going to be quite provocative in itself. Uh, and um, I think we're, we would be putting a lot on the, a lot of responsibility uh, on the shoulders of the Fort Monroe staff to determine what that signage is. Uh, when does the board meet, how often does the board meet? We do in June, but what do we have, two meetings before the actual uh, D-Day uh, in August where we're going to present ourselves to the international public? Mr. Voter? Uh, uh, yes, we, uh, we have our meeting in June and then uh, the next meeting won't be again until September. So there's one meeting. Uh, in, yes, Secretary Paul. Will you take a comment or would you want to continue? Well, I, I, uh, I, let me add a couple more sentences. I'm anxious to hear from you, Mr. Secretary. So, uh, I, I think, given what I have perceived from members of the authority, which are, and that thinking is actually consistent with my own, that the, in order to, uh, to uh, uh, convey the, the, the thinking of the authority, the signage is um, is not going to be any more uh, acceptable to those who support the arch than taking the arch down itself. Um, the, 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 uh, Fort Monroe is about where freedom lives. In August, we are going to present an historical context for the role that Fort Monroe has played in our history, looking to the, the, the future. Um, and and I, I think in here, the, uh, the, the governor made reference to the glorification of uh, Jefferson Davis. Um, 
uh, the same year that Virginia shamefully established the policy of massive resistance to school integration uh, uh, in the 1950s. I think, it, it, I know it is wholly inconsistent with uh, what we want to uh, convey to the public uh, in August. And um, I, I understand the hurdles that we face in removing it, uh, but if we can't remove it, it seems to me it should uh, uh, be obscured in some other way because I find it uh, offensive and I'm not even uh, you know, personally involved in the uh, suffering that took place as a result of uh, slavery and subsequent uh, massive resistance within the state. The fact that the today's governor has taken a stand as, uh, as forceful as uh, this governor has, uh, I think is historic in itself. Um, so, uh, when we make this motion to do signage, uh, easier said than done. Uh, I, and I, uh, I'm not sure that the authority has the ability to, um, uh, to assume responsibility for something that is going to be very difficult. Uh, to uh, reach some unanimity on what that scientist should say. So I'm, uh, I, I have reservations about the motion itself. I, I, I'm inclined to vote no because I don't know how, I don't really want to turn over that responsibility to the staff because it really needs to be one that the authority assumes. And, uh, and I, and I can't imagine signage that would be acceptable uh, to the authority uh, and also to those folks who um, uh, know, who support uh, the, its continuance. So um, now those are just uh, you know, my views. I, I don't take issue with the intent of the motion, but I do think uh, it's it's. Uh, it's somewhat problematic to, 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 to ask the uh, staff to come up with signage that would be acceptable. Mr. John? I'll withdraw the motion and make a substitute motion. Please do. Uh, I, so the motion is withdrawn. And, uh, uh, I move that the Board of Trustees support removal of the Jefferson Davis Arch under legal, the legal procedure requirements of the National Historic Preservation Act and the National Historic Landmark designation of the site as soon as possible. And could I suggest that you might want to add consistent with the governor's request? Sure. It, it is consistent with that. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Mr. Reynolds, it's been, uh, uh, the motion has been made seconded. Shall we have some discussion of that motion? Yes, Secretary Ball. Thank you. I'm, I'm a non-voting member of this board, uh, and were I able to vote, I would support that motion. Uh, uh, it's easy to support that motion. What I'm concerned about, and I, this is only my first year in government, is government doesn't move as quickly as one would like, and I have <laughs> great concerns about how quickly this thing can get done, get it removed to some other location. I've never seen this until yesterday. The last and only time I've been to Fort Monroe was the previous board meeting and you couldn't see three feet in front of you. <laughs> so I was spared that. Um, we came back and forth to the beach as kids. My mother never took us here and I'm beginning to think I know why. Uh, that, that's a very offensive, uh, that's a very offensive thing sitting up there. And uh, it's, it's offensive largely, I think, because of the timing of when it got put in. I think maybe if it had been put in in 1875, you would have a, maybe a different view, but it, it, I, I tend to share your view of probably why it's there. I don't, don't know that factually. Uh, I would not want to bring anybody here that is near and dear to me or somebody I know, friends from foreign countries, get out of some uh, interpretation of that, of, that, of that being put out there. Um, you, you can have, a, uh, there can be a debate about what, what interpretive signage should say, and we're having a conversation about it in the abstract because nobody's seen what I've been told has been worked on and I have been told there's funding for it. Uh, but I I, uh, I wouldn't, I, I think it's really important to get something up there right now because otherwise it's just sitting out there and it, it, it makes people uncomfortable and, and 
The fact that there's no explanation for it implicitly uh, looks like an endorsement of its presence there, which I, I find deeply offensive. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, Secretary Bob. And um, I, I happen to agree with the comments, but um, perhaps, uh, as Mr. Java suggested, his original motion is not inconsistent with the second motion, and maybe we incorporate them. So that, that I'm, I'm kind of thinking through this. I'd like, like to see us vote on the motion that's on the table, yeah. and then I would offer another motion. Yes, okay, so that would be the first. And even though I'm sitting right next to him, I'm not consulting with the executive director, which I really should do, and so I'm gonna give them an opportunity to speak. But, uh, let's hear from our city manager, Mary Bucky. Um, this was not directly part of the motion, but I think it's very relevant. I, I, I understand what we were told yesterday about the process that we must go through. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, I didn't think to ask this question yesterday. Um, I, I can't imagine that the reference to the property being the Jeff Davis Memorial Park is written into the programmatic agreement. And it would seem to me since we own the property now, we should be able to rename it to whatever we want to rename it. And that could be a major symbolic action to remove the name of it being the Jeff Davis Memorial Park as one bold initial step while we work on the process. And I'm, I'm kind of curious about that because I don't see that as being a physical attribute that would have to go through the programmatic agreement process. Perhaps I'm wrong and I'm not a lawyer and so I, we would have to defer to the experts, but I wanted to put into the conversation perhaps we rename the park. And then um, I also am I'm wondering, I had a, a little bit of a brief conversation and I just wanna encourage along the lines that the Chairman Moran mentioned yesterday about out of the box thinking about it. Um, I wondered if, you know, sort of along the lines of, when we were, when we were touring the, the new visitor center, um, it was explained how when um, work is being done, the documentation is made to preserve history and that if anybody ever wanted to put it back, there, the, the means for putting something back would be there. And so I wondered if we might not be able to remove the letters from the arch um, and document that with the proper photography and store the letters appropriately for historical archives or placement in the casemate or what have you leaving the arch up while we do the more formal process. So I'm just trying to get to some creative thinking about how we might address this challenge in the short term to do what we can in a bold way while we do the larger action in the slower governmental process. Well, Madam Manager, so I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't voice it because I thought that was kind of too radical an approach. Uh, but I have to say, when you express it, it seems perfectly reasonable. Um, and I appreciate uh, how well you articulated it, and I think that might be an approach as well. So we have three now ideas on the table. We're going to have some more discussion. But one is that ultimately the art should be removed. Two, that there should be appropriate signage. Three, there might be a way to remove the letters, for example, or to obscure the letters um, uh, until the arch is removed. Um, and I do want to hear from Mr. Oda, but we can get all the ideas on the table. Uh, uh, shall we hear from the Secretary of Natural Resources? Uh, Deputy Secretary. Secretary. I can speak to some of the things raised on option three. If you'd like, I can do it now or later. You tell me what's appropriate. Um, I think it's appropriate to hear it now. Sure. Yeah. So Thank you. there was a lot there, so I may not pick up on all of it, but pardon me. Is that on? No. Can you help me, Secretary Butler? Um, while that's being worked out, first, uh, both the, the programmatic agreement and the MOU uh, do both list the Jefferson Davis Arch as contributing factors. So it's in both documents. With regard to the MOU, the signatories are the governor and the Fort Monroe Authority. As, sec or pardon me, as Chief of Staff Mercer mentioned, there is some inconsistency about the listing being that the National Historic, the NHL listing period ends before the arch was erected. So if that is an anomaly and a mistake, that can be corrected by the two parties of the MOU, I believe. Um, that's one part. Second, with regard to removing the letters and things, we have done some research on that. 
removing the letters, just like removing the entire arch, would both likely trigger an adverse impact in a similar process. So I don't think you would, so you basically have to run through the same thing regardless of whether you do one or the other. So I, I guess, I'm sorry, um, just for clarification, um, is there not a process to mitigate an adverse action by documentation and archiving so that you can restore to the natural state if that's ever desired? And might that not be an approach we could take without endangering? I understand, and I want to be clear, I do not want to do anything to endanger the overall historic classification, both in terms of honoring the history as well as the enabling of historic tax credits to do the, the, the work that needs to be done here. So I, I would never suggest anything that would um, endanger that. But I, and, and maybe I misunderstood, I'm certainly not, not an expert in any of this, but when they were describing on our, on our visitor center tour the, the uh, mitigation efforts when you run into an adverse impact, and, and that qualification really being the ability to restore if ever need be. That's why I was kind of thinking maybe the letter removal, documentation, archiving, proper storage, so there would no deterioration of the letters might be an option. But if that's not an option, I certainly don't want to endanger our status um, in, in this zone E that's so critical. First, I should say I am not a historic preservation officer, and there are several in the room, so <laughs> I'm on thin ice. Um, that said, you know, my understanding, having met with many of them over time, is yes, uh, an adverse effect can and needs to be mitigated. We would have to mitigate an adverse effect either way, whether we removed the letters or the arch itself. There's also been some discussion about whether we could technically or physically remove the letters without damaging the rest of the arch. So having gone through all of those discussions, um, the recommendation of the governor was it would be best to remove the entire arch. And I certainly want the whole arch removed. I was just trying to get to a quicker fix. So I, I think unless we, there be any clarity about that. Yeah, there potentially could be um, a short-term covering of the letters or something perhaps during the celebration, that would not necessarily trigger an adverse effect, but those would be temporary and would not be attached or structurally impact the arch. Are you able to speak to the renaming of the park, whether that would be considered an adverse impact? Because the governor's letter speaks to not only the removal of the arch, but as well as removing references to Jeff Davis Memorial Park. And I was thinking that might be something we might be able to immediately do. I am not prepared to comment on that right now, but I'm happy to figure that out. All right, thank you. Very good. Uh, Mr. Joseph, did you have a comment? Uh, okay. 